about the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And I'm pretty sure this is his most famous novel because that's what everyone says. So it's a really good book. The language is kind of hard to understand, so it'll take a little bit to get used to it. But overall, I thought it was really great. The plot was really original. So it basically starts out in this house of a painter. His name is Basil. And he's with his friend, Lord Henry. And those are two, one of the, some of the two main characters. There's three. And then Lord Henry, he's, 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 really, he's really odd. He likes to do things his way, and he doesn't like to listen to anybody else. He doesn't really care about anybody else's feelings. And then Basil, you know, he's like the artistic type, and he's just really, he's really quiet, he's respectable, he's sweet. And then he's basically in the middle of a painting, and Lord Henry, he's like, oh wow, you know, this is really one of your greatest, your greatest um, paintings, why don't you release it so people can see it? And then Basil, he doesn't want to because he, feel like, he feels like that he's putting too much of himself into the painting. And so he doesn't want to really exploit himself like that. And the painting is of this man named Dorian Gray. And Dorian Gray is this really young, handsome guy. And everyone who meets him, like they fall in love with him because he's just so charming. And that's even a nickname of his, Prince Charming. And so throughout the story, it's mainly just about Dorian. And that first day, um, Lord Henry, he kind of influences Dorian. And then he starts saying, like, oh, you know, you're so beautiful, but be careful because it's not going to last. You know, being young is the best thing ever. You know, it's never going to be like that for you again, so you might as well cherish it. And so that really gets Dorian thinking. And then he just gets so miserable because he's like, oh my gosh, like the painting that Basil made of me, that's gonna stay young forever. Well, I'm gonna get old and wrinkled and ugly and no one's gonna like me anymore. So he like sells his soul, kind of. Like he doesn't actually like sell it to the devil or anything. But he pledges that, you know, he's gonna stay young forever. And so over time, you see how he gets so conceited and self-centered. And I think that's probably one of my favorite parts of the book is that throughout the book, you see how his character changes. You see all of the, his personality, like he's not charming anymore. He's really like deceptive and deceitful. And you just, he starts, you still, you care for the character because you kind of like feel his pain. Like, oh my gosh, like he's going through so much. Like, I wish someone was there to help him, but at the same time, you start to not like him because he's doing so many bad things. So the whole point of the book is that the picture of himself kind of represents his soul. He no longer has a soul. So whatever he does, all the sins he commits, as you can see in this picture, that's the real Dorian, what you see, but the stuff that he does in real life that hurts people, Ends up look, that's what the picture ends up looking like because everything that he does mirrors onto the picture. And so as the years go by, he just he does a bunch of really bad stuff. And so if you read the book, you'll find out what it is. It's a really good book. But like I said, the language is kind of hard to understand. But if you actually sit there and you try to get to know the characters and you actually try to find out what's going on, like you guys are going to be like, oh my god, what happens at the end?